Of all the characters born out of British animation, few are as well known and beloved as Wallace and Gromit. Ever since 1989, Wallace has been consuming wide varieties of cheese, creating wacky inventions, and carrying out marvelous misadventures with his silent but intelligent and sardonic dog Gromit in tow. And for many, many years, I have been a fan of the several cartoons they star in. There's just something about them that I've always liked, between the sharp writing, excellent claymation, and wacky tone that's easy to get wrapped into. In terms of why I decided to talk about them now of all possible times though, I mean, why not? The pandemic has eliminated a lot of opportunities for talking about new movies, so I figured I might as well continue talking about older ones. And given that I am a huge fan of animation and this series in particular, now would be as great of time as any to share my thoughts on the Wallace and Gromit cartoons. For this video, like other ones I've done recently for Pixar and Harry Potter, I will be ranking the six cartoons in order of personal preference. But I should also note that I enjoy every single cartoon that appears on this ranking. Just because something gets placed at the bottom doesn't mean I don't care for it. As is the nature with ranking videos, I just happen to like other cartoons more than others. Either way, grab some cheese and crackers, and let's get along with this smashing ranking, shall we? Number 6, A Matter of Loaf and Death. Despite how successful The Curse of the Were-Rabbit was, both financially and critically, the mid-2000s were a tough time for Aardman animations. They originally planned to make a feature-length sequel to that movie, but as a result of their not-so-amicable split from DreamWorks, they decided to just make another short film instead. I bring that up because A Matter of Loaf and Death, their newest short, is fun and light-hearted, but would have worked better as a full-length feature, in my opinion. I feel this way because this film is very fast-paced, almost to the detriment to the story. It all unfolds in a way that mirrors the other cartoons, but there are a lot of minute details in the animation and narrative that just breeze by very quickly. I would have personally enjoyed it more if the story was developed just enough to where the runtime could have stretched out to feature length, and therefore the pace would have had enough room to breathe. But again, there's not a bad or even mediocre cartoon mentioned in this entire video, so don't assume that my problems are significant enough to make me dislike it, because they aren't. I like A Matter of Loaf and Death, and I certainly hope there will come a day that we might get more Wallace and Gromit cartoons, even with Peter Salas unfortunately gone from this world. Number 5. Cracking Contraptions In what culminates as the shortest Wallace and Gromit production, Cracking Contraptions is unique in that it's a collection of 10 little vignettes that average about 1-2 to two minutes each. The premise is simple, we see a brand new invention concocted by Wallace, and then we witness how that device fails to work in very wholesome ways. I suppose the main reason why it ranks lower than some of the other cartoons is because I don't really like how Wallace exploits Gromit in some of them. Gromit would much rather spend his time reading, knitting, or doing some other kind of artistic endeavor, and yet Wallace keeps pulling him away for things that seem quite silly to him, with Gromit occasionally being the literal punching bag in this case, or the unfortunate guinea pig that is stuck being bounced by an automated spring in the middle of the night. But that is also where the entertainment value for these vignettes comes from, because the shenanigans Wallace gets them into are all supremely entertaining nonetheless, and not a single short feels like a repeat of what came before. Fans of Wallace and Gromit owe it to themselves to check out Cracking Contraptions, since it's just the kind of short burst of family-friendly humor that anyone could enjoy. All ten shorts are fun, concise, and unique enough to stick with you. Number 4, A Grand Day Out. And here we arrive at the short that started it all. Nick Park's debut with Aardman may be showing its age due to the dated claymation techniques and character models, but absolutely none of the charm and delightful British humor of his original special have been lost over time. To this day, A Grand Day Out remains a creative and humorous introduction to the cheese-loving inventor and his unusually intelligent dog. And this one still stands out in a very distinctive way from the rest, since instead of being a riff on the horror and mystery genres, A Grand Day Out is a dose of light sci-fi. With a very entertaining montage of the two main characters building a homemade rocket, launching said rocket into the atmosphere, landing on a version of the moon that is quite literally made of cheese, and encountering a coin-operated robot that dreams of skiing European slopes, it is indeed a grand adventure into space, if perhaps the story is a bit slight compared to the films ranked higher in this video. Even so, I will never grow tired of watching this first Wallace and Gromit cartoon. 
Number three, The Curse of the Were-Rabbit. I was 10 years old when my dad first took me to see this at the AMC Mesa Grand in October 2005. I got a kick out of it then, and I still do as an adult, with the fact that I now work for a pest control company making it even more relevant to me. In rewatching it the other day, I realized that I'd forgotten how creative and consistently engaging it is, which is a considerable feat since this was the first and still only attempt to make Wallace and Gromit work as a full-length feature film. But it really does work well in that way, for the team at Ardman found enough of a compelling story out of their efforts to poke fun at monster movies. But more than that, I think it's just a really smashing film to watch, with it possibly being the funniest Wallace and Gromit cartoon there is. For one thing, it passed the test I posed to all comedies, which is making me laugh out loud while watching it alone on my couch. That happened quite often, actually, due to Ardman's ability to deliver great visual gags with their animation, as well as inserting a lot of witty lines here and there. It also helps that Peter Salas was working at the top of his game as Wallace, while Helen a bottom Carter provides a memorable turn as Lady Toddington, and casting Ray Fiennes as a villain is always a smart choice, but it's even better when said villain is a complete and utter goofball like Victor Quartermain. All in all, The Curse of the Were-Rabbit is a very fun way to spend 85 minutes, and again, I hope there would be an opportunity for a full-length Wallace and Gromit sequel in the future, especially since Shaun the Sheep got one, and Chicken Run will be getting one too. One can only hope. Number 2. The Wrong Trousers Many people consider this to be the best Wallace and Gromit cartoon of them all, and honestly, they're probably right. I would actually tend to agree with that argument, but at the end of the day, I just happen to like it second best for personal reasons. Really though, the ambition, fast pace, and gripping yet hilarious mystery at the center of the wrong trousers makes it such a memorable treat of a film, and one of the best stop motion shorts ever made. Its story packs a surprising emotional punch too, for as Feathers the Penguin deceptively infiltrates Wallace and Gromit's home, a rift develops between the disavowed Gromit and the unwitting Wallace, with a sinister plot to rob a museum unfolding by the minute. I genuinely felt for Gromit as he feels dejected by his master, as well as Wallace once he realizes that he was just an innocent pawn in Feather's game. Thankfully, all of the emotional ups and downs culminate in a terrific chase scene that is still one of the coolest things I've ever seen in a cartoon. And I'm not just talking about stop motion, I mean all kinds of animation. Wallace and Gromit attempting to catch Feathers with their motorized trains set is already ingenious enough, but that's elevated to insanely riveting heights by the fact that Gromit has to continuously place more track as they go along, on top of Feathers threatening them with a real gun. My words can never really do this chase scene justice, but it's glorious. The Wrong Trousers is just a blast, and deserves all of its praise as the best Wallace and Gromit cartoon. Well done, we did it! Ha <laughs> ha! That being said, my personal favorite is still a close shave. All of the wonderful qualities I talked about with relation to the wrong trousers could be applied to an argument for a close shave, except a close shave has some things that its direct predecessor just didn't. For one thing, it was the debut of Sean the Sheep. That's all that really needs to be said about him, for he was a wonderful addition to an increasingly great cast of characters, and he continues to impress with his own delightful series of cartoons. But moreover, the emotional appeals are even stronger, with Gromit's tragic false imprisonment being unexpected unexpectedly somber, as well as the inclusion of Wallace's first romantic interest in Wendelin Ramsbottom. It also features an even more ambitious and exciting climax than The Wrong Trousers, which really is saying something since I absolutely adore the toy train chase. But the last 10 minutes or so of A Close Shave are truly great, between the hilarious gags with the sheep riding Wallace's motorcycle, Gromit transforming the sidecar into a mini airplane, and the amazing reveal that Preston is a robot with defective programming. While Feathers may be the the S-tier villain in this series, Preston is very close to him and how menacing he is, and the conflict caused by his actions has much more at stake. For all of these qualities and more, A Close Shave is my favorite Wallace and Gromit cartoon, and is the best in a series that has only kept on giving over the years. Here's hoping for a bright future for the franchise as Ardman continues to make more clay-formed art for us to enjoy.